Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. I have a book haul here. Um, about 30 books or so. Uh, most of them are from Book Outlet. Presently they have their $7.99 sale on. Um, that's Canadian price, a little cheaper in the States. Um, where all the books are $7.99 including the hardcovers and 20% off the other merchandise on the site. So um, I usually take advantage of that sale. Uh, and there's a couple from Amazon here also. So I'll start with um, Minette Walters, The Swift and the Harrier. So I have read a handful of Minette Walters books in the past. Uh, she um, originally was doing a lot of um, murder mysteries in small English villages and I really enjoyed them. They were really neat characters. There's a lots of plots and um, twist in the plots and that sort of thing. I really did enjoy her books. And then she wrote a couple of books about the plague, um, The Last Hours and The Turn of Midnight. I, I really enjoyed The Last Hours. Um, the Turn of the Midnight, um, it was okay, but I, I really enjoyed that first one. But she, she does very good murder mysteries and history books. So this particular one takes place in, during the Civil War in England. Uh, during the 1600s and um, this uh, woman Jane Swift she's a physician and uh, the country was extremely divided during that time uh, it was sort of the royalist against the parliament and um, people were very divided um, th this woman actually belongs to a royalist family but she's trying to stay neutral and that sort of thing and treat um, patients on both sides and that sort of thing. So yeah, I do love history um, and it was a fascinating time period. And this is Malice House by Megan Shepherd. So I love the cover. Um, definitely looks like an isolated thriller, which it is. Uh, so this um, woman, her father has passed away and she is cleaning out her late, fa <coughs> late father's uh, remote seaside house. Um, so there's other um, people living uh, near this house and um, he was a writer and she discovers this man handwritten manuscript that's very different from what he usually writes. And then all these strange things are happening in the house and with the neighbors and, um, and that sort of thing. So I don't think I read anything by Megan uh, Shepherd. so that's Malice House. And then Katrina Ward, um, I did read The Last House on Needless Street, which I enjoyed. Um, now this one's gotten mixed reviews, uh, Looking Glass Sound. I absolutely love the cover. Um, so it kind of has a vague synopsis. So it says, in a cottage overlooking the windswept main coast, Wilder Harlow has begun the last book he'll ever write. And then something happened in his youth. Um, there was a killer stalking his the small vacation town that the um, that they holidayed at, and then um, while he's writing, um, strange things are happening. Like he'll wake up and um, entire chapters have been written, and he's going like I didn't type this sort of thing. So yeah, it sounds very spooky. Got mixed reviews, but um, I'm looking forward to it anyhow. And um, this one's uh, been quite popular this year on book two, The Last Word by Taylor Adams. And I did read No Exit um, by this author, and that took place in a uh, isolated rest stop during a snowstorm. This woman goes out to her car, and as she's walking by this truck, she sees this child locked in this cage in the back of a truck. So she has to go back in knowing that someone in the rest stop has kidnapped this child. So that was a very good book. Um, so this one, uh, this woman lives in isolation. That uh, seems to be a common theme here. Uh, she lives in isolation and um, she reads this very poorly written book and she gives the author a one star. And then she hears back from the author they're kind of nattering back and forth and then strange things start happening around her house. So um, yeah, I've heard good things about it. So um, we'll see how that one goes. And um, yeah, I'm obsessed with plague books about the plague. I don't know what it is, but every time I hear plague and I see a book about it, I just, I just pick it up. So anyway, this is The Plague Letters by V.L. 
Valentine. So um, yeah, there's a the, the two most inf infamous plagues were during the 1300s, and then there, another one was during the 1600s. So those were the most notorious kind of plagues that just wiped out millions of people. Um, so this takes place in 1665. Um, so there is this um, minister or rector, and he finds this body. I mean, there's bodies everywhere. Um, let's face it, it's a plague. But this one, um, this person had the shorn head and burns, and their arms and legs were tied up. So obviously they were murdered, and then um, there's a discovery of other uh, bodies in that. So they have to find out who's murdering this person. Another one uh, popular book that's gotten good reviews is um, by Jesse Sutanto, and this is Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for um, murderers. So this is supposed to be uh, kind of a lighthearted, humorous book. Um, so uh, Vera Wang uh, lives above a tea, a tea shop that she owns in the middle of San Francisco's Chinatown. She goes down one day and finds a dead man in the middle of her tea shop. Um, so yeah, she, I guess she um, kind of investigates herself or something. But it's supposed to be uh, kind of a lighthearted, humorous book. And this one is Everyone in My Family Has Killed some, Somebody or Someone. And, um, yeah, this is not a book about serial killers or anything like this. Um, it, now, at the, the little top of the synopsis, it says, Knives Out and Clue meet Agatha Christie and the Thursday Murder Club in this fiendishly clever blend of classic and modern murder mystery. So I guess there's um, some kind of family reunion, um, and it's taking place at a remote mountain resort, and... Um, a body is found, etc., etc. But anyway, um, it's gotten good reviews, heard good things about it, so um, that'll be a fun read. And I did get a couple of um, Christmas books. Um, I might do a video next on some of the books I want to read in the winter time. Um, oh, sweet. I'm getting too old to sit like this. Um, that kind of had a isolated snowy kind of themes to it. Uh, this is by Rebecca Raisin, and this is Flora's Traveling Christmas Shop. Something just a little lighthearted. Um, I like to read once in a while. Uh, so Flora, um, she gets fired uh, from this Christmas store. Uh, so she decides that she's always wanted to go to Lapland and visit that. So... Um, it's just about her adventures in Lapland. And um, this one is um, Thin Air, a ghost story by Michelle Paver. So this takes place in 1935 in the Himalayan mountains, and it follows five Englishmen. Um, but yeah, I don't think things go too well. If things went too well, they wouldn't have written a book, right? Oh, okay, just want to throw that over there. Um, now this one, uh, I thought I'd just check this out. This is the first book in a series by Catherine Lloyd. And it sounds like kind of a cozy uh, mystery, Miss Morton and the English House Party Murder. And uh, this takes place in Regency England, which is I think the 1830s or so. And um, this woman, uh, her father passes away and he is an earl. But um, she discovers that he basically left them with no money, uh, no income or home. So she ends up becoming a lady's companion. And um, I believe they go to a house party in the countryside and then someone gets murdered. So it's kind of like a, a cozy uh, murder mystery. Um, yeah, I always kind of chuckle when I hear a cozy murder mystery. <laughs> I don't know what's cozy about murder, but you know what I mean. Um, this is uh, Sarah Pierce. Um, this is The Retreat. She did write The Sanatorium, which I do have. I uh, have not read it yet. I want to do it this winter because it's kind of an isolated um, thriller in this um, chateau in the mountains. And it's gotten, that one did get very mixed reviews. Um, but anyway, I thought, hey, I'm going to get this one. Um, so this, uh, again, I, uh, isolated thriller seems to be the theme of this haul, doesn't it? Um, so there's a wellness retreat on an island off the English coast. 
promising rest and relaxation, but has a dark past. It used to be the playground of a serial killer. And then, um, yeah, someone ends up getting murdered in that, and they're investigating. So, uh, this is Starling House by Alex E. Harrell, and I just finished last month reading, um, uh, what was it, The Once and Future Witches, which I really enjoyed. So I did want to read another book of hers. Um, so, yeah, um, I love the cover. Oh, There's just something very creepy about that. Um... So Opal is trying to, um, I guess her, her and her younger brother are orphans. She's a part-time cashier. She's trying to make a better life for her, um, her younger brother. And um, they move to the small town. And uh, this author, reclusive author, had disappeared over 100 years ago. And... Um, yeah, anyway. Oh, I got pictures in here. Didn't realize that. Got pictures. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed the Once in Future, um, which is, uh, so I picked that one up. Another very popular one, I think it's um, on the Goodreads Thriller of the Year list or something like that. It's Lisa Jewell and None of This is True. Um, so yeah, this one... Um, it's gotten very good reviews, actually. So this woman is celebrating her 45th birthday at this pub. And she's a podcaster. And this woman um, comes up and says, Oh, I'm celebrating my 45th, too. We're birthday twins. Um, and then they bump into each other. And I think the one um, gets a little bit obsessed by the other one. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've heard good things about it. Uh, now this one, I was kind of flipping through um, some of the Goodreads um, uh, reviews in that, and I saw this uh, woman's books pop up, and they've all gotten very good reviews. So I just thought, oh, I'll just check it out and see um, what this one's like. So this is The Maid's Diary. So this woman is a maid for this wealthy couple, and um, she she snoops. She loves to snoop. Um, she goes into their closets and drawers and doesn't steal anything. She's just a snoop. And then she kind of discovers something that she shouldn't have seen. And um, I believe the, the couple and herself go missing. Um, and then we have to figure out, like, what happened. Um, so, yeah. I've heard good things about her books. This is The Minuscule Mansion of Myra Malone by Audrey Burgess. And did I get this off Amazon? I think I got this off Amazon too. Um, so this woman sounds like she has agoraphobia. She doesn't like to leave her house. From her attic in the Arizona mountains, 34-year-old Myra blogs about a dollhouse mansion that captivates thousands of readers worldwide. Um, yeah, she kind of decorates this mansion and probably puts it online or something. Um, but anyway, someone, someone online notices that it um, kind of a reflection of his own life that's mirrored in this mansion and he goes searching her out and that sort of thing. But anyway, Sounded kind of interesting. Um, now I oh, this this book is it's a paperback, but it's like heavy. <laughs> uh, this is a Canadian author, actually. I think she's indigenous author. Um, a broken blade. Now they had the, this one's off book outlet, and they did have the second book, um, but it was sold out before I was able to nab it. But it's gotten very good reviews, and it's. Um, uh, by Melissa Blair, and it's a Broken Blade, the Halfling Saga. Um, so it's, it is a fantasy story. Kira is a killer um, as the blades, as the king's blade or assassin. She's the most talented spy in the kingdom, and um, and then uh, a mysterious figure moves against the crown, and she's called down to to um, hunt down this. Uh, the so-called shadow. Um, so yeah, I've heard very good things about it. It's nice to uh, support a Canadian author. So I'm hoping the second book uh, will pop up again on Book Outlet. 
Uh, so this one's an interesting premise. It's actually based on a true story. It's Surprise Woman by Carolina Lee. And this actually takes place in Toronto, 1960, 1926. Um, like I said, it's based on a true story. So there is this gentleman who is a childless millionaire. So he passes away without an heir. So he leaves behind this will saying that the recipient of his fortune will be the woman who bears the most children in 10 years after his death. So it spurs this contest that becomes a media sensation and it actually follows um, uh, at least a couple of women, maybe more, uh, about um, their kind of reaction to this contest and what happened. But it's based on a true story. So, um, yeah, I'm going to read a little bit more about that. It sounds very interesting. And Jenny Colgan, I do like her books. They're just, um, if I've been reading some, like, um, kind of heavy emotional books, sometimes I just need to cleanse my brain, and I'll read a Jenny Colgan. So this is a new series of hers. I believe this just came out in the summertime. And it's called The Summer Skies. So this is a new series, and it takes place in Scotland. So I love books that take place in Ireland, Scotland, um, uh, England, I just I just love those. So, uh, Moreg is a third generation pilot. So she runs a tiny plane service with her grandfather in Scotland's northernmost islands, and um, so she delivers mail and medicine, etc., etc., like this. And um, yeah, just a lot of things are going on in her life and that sort of thing. But yeah, I just um, just that uh, the the northern Scotland and all life on a small island. I just look really looking forward to that one. Um, now this is a first in a series. I thought I'd just give it a try. It's kind of a cozy mystery. It's a Death in Door County by Annalise Ryan. So this is the first book in a series. So this woman is a um, Wisconsin book store owner and in her spare time she likes to kind of hunt down cryptids to see if they're actually real or not and um so one day in upper michigan um sorry um on the shores of lake michigan these bodies start uh, popping up and um they look like they've been bitten by these really large animals oh i just got a cool Okay, sorry. Um, so yeah, she she's kind of a skeptic too. She kind of wants to rule out um, that there is actually these these creatures and that sort of thing. And the one um, review says, full of fascinating history and lore, as well as underwater geography of those fearsome waterways. Um, so yeah, I thought it was just um, something different and um, Looking forward to that one. So this is Glory Over Everything by Kathleen Grissom, and she's the author of The Kitchen House, which has gotten really rave reviews, which I still have to read. I have it. I still have to read it. And um, this takes place in 1830. Um, so um, this character, he, his name is Jamie, and he hides a deadly secret. He does pass as a wealthy white aristocrat in Philadelphia, society but he's actually a runaway slave hiding in plain sight um so he did make an acquaintance when he was a boy and um he is risk he risks his life to go down back down south to save his, his friend in that so um all righty and these two books are by ella d harper and the first one is the wolf den and this one is the house with the golden door and um, these take place um, back in Pompeii before the volcano erupted and it follows a um, uh, the beloved daughter of a Greek doctor and then her father ends up passing away and they become destitute so she ends up um, uh, becoming a slave and a prostitute in um, uh, one of the brothels in Pompeii and I actually watched the documentary and there was like a ton of brothels in Pompeii so it um, these cover her life almost done here um, so this is the first time she drowned by Carrie Kletter and um, it's been two and a half years since 
Cassie O'Malley's mother dumped her into a mental institution against her will. Now she's 18 and she's finally able to reclaim her life and enter the world and college on her own terms. Uh, but she's just gotten so much psycholog psychological damage from her mother, so it just follows her along. And this one I got mostly for the cover, <laughs> A Hunger of Thorns. It's just so beautiful. Uh, by Lily Wilkinson. I believe this one is a uh, YA fiction. So Maud is the daughter of witches. She spent her childhood um, with her best friend and um, then the um, nowadays magic is toothless, reduced to uh, glamour patches and psychic energy drinks, etc, etc. Um, so it follows them along kind of re rediscovering their magic. This is The Vanishing Hour by Serafina Nova Glass. That's quite the name. Um, so this is another one that she's gotten very good reviews, but you just never hear about the books. Um, Grace Holloway keeps to herself. She escaped death at the hands of the man who kidnapped her. Uh, she's thrown herself into the small inn she runs in Maine. It's quiet and quaint, and it's quite isolated. And then, um, yeah, people start disappearing in that, so... Um, and then this one is Night Birds by Kate J. Armstrong. Again, I just love that cover. Um, what was this about? Oh, they got a beautiful map on the inside. I love a good map. <laughs> so, um, oh man, this is quite the long synopsis. The Night Birds are symptoms best kept secret. These privileged girls can temporarily gift their rare yet potent magic to those looking to gain advantages in life, business, or love. Um, but then the magic is outlawed. And the religious sects uh, want to see them burned when they're discovered. So, um, yeah. That is my book haul. <laughs> um, yeah, I gotta get reading, man. Um, I got enough books here to sink a ship. So, anyway... Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. hope you gave, got you uh, some good ideas. And yeah, I'm going to make up a video of some of the books I like to read during the, the winter time. And uh, yeah, if you um, read any of these books, let me know how you enjoy them. So everyone take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.